guys. It is July 23rd, 2018. I'm going to go through this rather quickly. South Africa, a court has ruled to confiscate 300,000 guns or from 300,000 gun owners. It seems to be turning rapidly into a tyrannical communist state. If you don't know what's happening with South Africa, South Africa, you can just South Africa communist state, South Africa uh, white genocide, white farmers murdered. Yeah, well, it seems that South Africa, now the truth and reconciliation that they had there didn't quite work. So, um, there is an awful lot of violence taking place and you can watch these documentaries um, Soviet strategy for conquest of South Africa Russia has now accepted 15,000 white South Africans they're fleeing South Africa because of how many farmers are being murdered their children in really horrific ways what I don't hear in these new videos is a connection between now, you know, the present and the past. And while I understand that all of this is a deliberate agenda that is part of the reshaping of our new world for the elite's pleasure to make all of us slaves and the pitting one another or pitting one another against one another. Look, the divide and conquer, wow, does that really get people going? Um, so now, much of what has been happening in South Africa with the whites, the whites were doing to the blacks not too long ago, and it just kind of flips, and it's like I'm so unbelievably done, you know, with this violence. Uh, <laughs> Wow, all right. Um, and Australia has been accepting South African white farmers. The white South African refugees. Another uh, documentary that I just started watching, Tainted Heroes, Communist Terrorists in South Africa, ANC and coming race war in South Africa. South Africa is really in great violent turmoil and when you look at these court rulings and they're going to be taking away the guns from white farmers that so desperately need you know the guns to protect themselves well uh, yeah it is turning quickly into this tyrannical communist state. Well, how are we doing in the United States? Not that great. All agendas continue to go forward. U.S. promises full implementation of United Nations gun control agreement. June 29 marked the end of the third review conference of the United Nations Program of Action, the POA, on small arms and light weapons. And I will link below to everything, but I will link below to this article that is on uh, the New American website. It's written by Joe Wolverton. Very good article. And you need to circulate this information. Delegates included representatives of the United States. So this program of action will serve as an international instrument to enable states to identify and trace in a timely and reliable manner the small arms and light weapons that are the target of the scheme. This means that the governments of member nations, the member states of this program of action, which I believe all Western nations are member states, but I could be wrong on that. Um, 
Well, those governments should create a massive all-inclusive database of all parties that manufacture, own, sell, trade, or transfer arms and ammunition. Congress could hypothetically pass a law, or the president would issue an executive order compelling voluntary surrender of whatever private-owned weapons and ammo parts, uh, components, the United Nations deems illicit. Talk about losing your own country's sovereignty, handing it over to the United Nations. The delegates, including those from the United States, have agreed to begin developing domestic legal frameworks that will provide for the proper management of small arms and light weapons stockpiles. To assist member states in the implementation of the disarmament and stockpiling of the pro prohibited small weapons and light arms in the hands of anyone other than approved government ent entities, the program of action places the enforcement of the provisions into the operational activities of United Nations peacekeeping missions. Should the Congress and the President fail to begin seizing and stockpiling privately owned weapons in a timely manner, the United Nations will deploy blue-helmeted peacekeeping troops to assist in the operation. All member states agreed to advance these six commitments to establish or strengthen national laws, regulations, and administrative procedures in support of the full and effective implementation, to strengthen coordinated national approaches for the implementation of the program of action, including the establishment or designation of national coordination agencies or bodies involving relevant government agencies, including those responsible for law enforcement, border control, and export and import licensing to promote the full participation and representation of women in mechanisms. Wow. Interesting. Well, if, if you didn't get the manipulation in this commitment, use women. Use women to get rid of, uh, to hand over the guns. You know, those women who want to protect their children from getting killed in a school. Oh, wow. You know, so much is so obvious that it's really frightening that we can't get through to people. Um, but, yeah, get women in this mechanism relating to the implementation of the program of action and to encourage strong cooperation with civil society, parliamentarianism, uh, parliamentarians, industry, and the private sector to establish or designate a national point of contact to act as a liaison between states and the program of action and to share and update this information regularly to encourage the development and implementation of national action plans or other national policies in support of the implementation of the program of action by making better use of existing information to improve the measurement of progress and to coordinate the development and implementation of such plans or policies as appropriate in collaboration with relevant stakeholders, including those from civil society and industry, with those relevant, oh wow, with those relevant to target 16.4 of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development God, and to the relevant United Nations Resolution on Women, Disarmament, prolif uh, non -pro sorry, Non-Proliferation, and Arms Control, and to significantly reduce the illicit flows of small arms and light weapons. Well, good, good that Obama and Eric Holder are out of office, considering that Fast and Furious, where they were handing over those small arms and light weapons to... Mexican cartel, criminals, okay. Well, what did you just hear? 
there is a deliberate program to manipulate an awful lot of nation states their governments, the private sector, women, get them all involved to convince people to turn over their guns. But if they don't do it, United Nations peacekeeping forces will come in and do it. Wow. Never thought that I would live this. Anyone with even the most cursory constitutional education will be able to identify several significant problems. First, they would have to undo the Second Amendment completely or not. You know, the Constitution is really just this, it's an idea, it's a, it's, there is none. And all of the gun control measures have violated that Constitution. There shall be no infringement. Well, we've had a lot of infringements. And, yeah, the president, to write an executive order, these executive orders are unconstitutional. It's clear that every president, including the present one, Congress, Supreme Court, they have all violated the Constitution. So, I'm not going to go into that. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So, that's going to be a little tricky if they try to repeal the Second Amendment. Or, maybe they'll just have a massive, massive uh, gun, automatic weapon, false flag, where so many people are killed and Americans they just won't even care about the Second Amendment at all. You don't have to repeal it. You just get enough American support. They'll support anything. They don't care about their Constitution. They don't care that it's violated. They just want those guns gone. They just want quick answers like little kids. Give me a quick, quick solution. Don't, I don't want to have to think too, too hard. When you have a people in that condition, you can do anything. And we are in a very poor condition, the American people. On the whole, not talking about everyone. All right, second, the agreement would require the repeal of the Tenth Amendment. It would place state governments as well as state and local law enforcement subject to federal and international agencies tasked with licensing weapons and controlling international borders. And hey, just kind of reminded, uh, this is a treaty. It's an international treaty. And doesn't Congress have to ratify it? Ah, hell with it. Hell with that Constitution. Third, the appointment of a liaison between the federal government and the United Nations would be an extra constitutional act that would result in the endowment of an unelected person uh, with the necessary means to carry out the program of action in the United States. And sorry that, uh sigh was, that lawnmower was just turned on, so hope you don't hear it. Um, so... Could this liaison call upon the General Assembly or the Security Council to send United Nations peacekeepers into the territory of one of the sovereign states of the American Union? It is not outside the realm of possibility. But consider this paragraph from the program of action. To take advantage of the opportunities that new technologies, whenever, when available, can offer for enhanced small arms and light weapons stockpile management and security, including through improved marking and record keeping and for the destruction of surplus small arms and light weapons that have been designated for destruction. Okay, the United Nations plans on taking your guns away, everything away, anything gun related, and destroying it. 
that should really send red flags flying high in every American's mind, even those who are against guns, even those who want the repeal of the Second Amendment, who believe, you know, that all of these uh, mass shootings, um, you know, the answer is to take the guns away. All of this, everything that I just read, and you can read the full uh, program of action. It is a PDF straight from the United Nations General Assembly. It's all true. But if anybody has any critical thinking skills or has the ability to actually listen carefully at this point, um, they should really, all of this should beg questions. It should really beg questions. Why is the United Nations doing this? Why do they want to get rid of all guns when we have been talking about gun control and we're not talking about those handguns. We're talking about the automatic or the semi-automatic rifles. Why are they talking about all guns? Because this has been in the works. This is the third review. This has been ongoing, uh, I think even before the Hillary Clinton days when she was Secretary of State. I think Kerry signed on to it. Hillary was for it. There's been an ongoing agenda to get rid of all guns from ordinary people. Think about it. Only law enforcement and military can have guns. Which means that you are denied any kind of security. Any kind of security. We have an awful lot of violence taking place. All of those law-abiding citizens who have guns to secure their own self and family. Th this should be an obvious uh, an obvious red flag for every American to get. Wow, those people who said they want to get rid of the Second Amendment and confiscate all guns Maybe they were right. Maybe they were right. But unfortunately, you know, it's like people go to Snopes. Hey, let me get my fact check from Snopes. They'll tell me the truth. A little gun history. An internet post purporting to prove that the worst genocides of the 20th century were the result of gun control laws includes a good deal of erroneous history and what they are saying is gun control does not equate to gun confiscation guess what it really does when you know that there is a deliberate agenda in place to confiscate all of the guns and well you can't just come out and say Let's repeal the Second Amendment, and now the United States, the freest country in the world, we're just going to confiscate everybody's guns. Don't you think Americans would be up in, well, arms? No pun intended. Of course they would. So you do it incrementally, and you create a lot of false flags. You create an awful lot of mass gun shootings. And it's unfortunate that Americans are just really, most are willfully, willfully, they are choosing to remain blind and willfully ignorant because all of this is just too upsetting. Well, guess what, guys? We are undergoing a takeover, a communist takeover, just like South Africa just like an awful lot of nation states around the world. This is an agenda for the new world order, for the globalists, the elitists, to take over the world. 
It's happening. It's real. You want to continue denying it. You are absolutely part. You're on the side of those who are implementing all of these agendas to take to strip from you your freedom and your rights. That's what's happening. How do you get through to people? Hell if I know. All links are below. Very dangerous. Yeah. What does he say at the end? It, there's a working paper submitted by the United States and <laughs> it declares implementation of the program of action. It must remain a priority, a number one priority, and that the United States must support this full implementation at the global, regional, and national levels. Perhaps Americans who oppose eventual disarmament by the United Nations and the participation of our government in that betrayal should contact President Trump and encourage him to get the United States out of the United Nations. Well, who sent that representative, that delegate from the United States, to discuss an international treaty that affects the United States? If we are a member state, uh, what's happening here? Think about it, guys. Trump, do you think he doesn't know about this? I don't think so. I think he knows full well. And he hasn't said anything about it. So, you guys, get in touch with your president and tell him to pull us out of this program of action.